before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Are you in charge of the dock workers? Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I guess she's to a tiny chair opposite to his giant desk. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. Man relaxes into his chair and continues. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. The lieutenant nods at you in the chair. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. I don't sit. It's kind of my thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. As he nods, his multiple chins move like ocean waves. I, too, have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. He turns back to his typewriter. You're no titan of volition, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. Take a seat. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you are a reasonable man and reasonable men Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. Damn, this chair is uncomfortable. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair is incredibly uncomfortable. Fortunately, your ass is made of iron, and the chair is made of wood. Iron beats wood. You manage not to shift around too much. I beat my wood too. Oh, uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Points at it again. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. Wait, you know Garrett? Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. Let's take it, but don't say anything. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? Or? No. No, it's cool. Cool? I wouldn't go that far. I'm sure there are cooler things than delivering a comically oversized novelty check to a cafeteria manager. But, sure. If that's what's cool nowadays. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. I'm not worried. I got this. Are you all right, Harry? You say you got Harry this, Dubois? but you seem a little Is that my name? to me. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? No, you're about I'm... about to cry because you <laughs> lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. So what? Men can cry too. You want 
to cry, God, your wound. No, well, it's not. Whatever it's you, you requesting to co-stream with me or something. Success. How's it going, Schnoey? Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this, Mr. Dubois? He keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry. Let's keep sliding down the chair like a jello shot. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow in a kind of throw in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Actually, this chair is uncomfortable. I could use that glass of water. What an odd demonstration of. Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man. As yeah, I'm it's sure like co streaming stuff that Twitch is trying to push. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost. Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Am I going to ask? Hell, Harry. You spin kicked my strongest man <laughs> in the face. I saw it from my window. Would you ask a man like that how he got into your container yard? I understand. I am a terrifying death machine. Don't worry, Harry. Between you and me, I am not a huge fan of his race thing, but the Union did not get where we are today by frowning on eccentricity. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Do I have any thoughts that I want to explore? No, I don't. I could actually put some points into something. I guess I can always use this when I need it rather than blowing it now. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? <laughs> I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. I've opened a few doors in my life. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colors, Harry. This really is very simple and there's nothing shady about it. <laughs> Sounds shady. Does this jiggling ooze think he's going to use you? He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son, with your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up. And when he does, you're going to come out on top. I bet you don't even know anything about the hang. Harry, my dear friend. I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martin A's. Why don't you just open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean by a weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and rubs his nose. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Damn it, fine. I'll look into it. We need to talk about that murder. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. He flicks his fingers. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. 
One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Told the union is involved in local drug trade. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? No comment. Harry, you wound me, Harry, in the heart. But I trust you to put this to bed. Do what you must, and let's change the subject, shall we? Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. You know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? Is that actually what they're doing on Twitter? Oh, it's almost that time of year where people throw September in their Twitch titles. Where are they? They, yeah, knock, knock. Yeah. The comments are pretty apt for sure. I met Joyce, the company representative. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals? Yes. We're all trying to do what's best for Martin Eight. Don't feel like you shouldn't work with her just because you and I are such good friends. I'm not a jealous guy. Whoa. That's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. What happened to the previous negotiator, Mr. Gaumont? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. You made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. You call them a midget. Harry, I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. It's hard to say if he really lost his temper or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. Joyce said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Everett, Joy seems to think the union is lowballing her. Yes, yes. Lowballing, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. Why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. Okay, let's talk about something else. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. What's in the container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. Never mind the container. I rarely do, Harry. I have people for that. Now, you were saying? You called me Mr. Dubois. Why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everett. I call you Harry. That's really my name. My God, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. My memory's fine. I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. 
However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out. With my big fat folder. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? The lieutenant inspects Everett over his spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Oh my god. Let's get this straight. What is my full name? It's Harry. Harry Dubois. Okay, I like it. I can work with that. And I can work with you, Harry. Now, what else can I do for you? Do you know where I live? But of course, Harry. Your precinct is the 41st and you live in Jamrock. You're a Jamrock boy. A long way from home, but that's okay. Do you know anything about my family? Do I have a wife or kids, or...? Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? I think I do. I'd be a wonderful father. Well, yes. I'm sure you're going to make one little boy or a girl very happy and proud one day, Harry. What kind of cop does it say I am? Harry, you're not simply a cop. You're a star. A bright shining star in the drab law enforcement sky. Outshining all other stars. You're a superstar. That's what I like about you, Everett. You get me. Of course I do, Harry. And I'm going to help you shine. I'm going to put you on all the big stages. Your name in giant neon letters. Harry Dubois. The giant neon sign reading Harry Dubois. Hanging from the Kavalsun crane. Can be seen all the way to Jamrock. He does. Somewhere in. I Europe, am a superstar. A beautiful woman sees the bright glow on the horizon. And says to herself. Oh my god. I shouldn't have left him. Where did you get that folder? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. It's a uh, YOLO. Everett's <laughs> large hands are covering the folder, but the look on his face says, I know everything about you, Harry. I've got nothing to hide. Oh, Harry. Oh, wow. This is really something. I'm sure it's not that bad. At worst, he has an old RCM folder. And I very much doubt even that. So how about it, Harry? You need assistance, I presume? Let's talk of other matters for a moment. Of course, Harry, of course. Let's not linger on personal details and amnesia. You wanted something from me. I want to go over a couple of things about me. Let's hear it, Harry. All right. Of course, Harry. Let's talk about my course. lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. <laughs> the only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Hold on. Could you really hold my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Does this mean if I do things for you, I'll get my gun back? Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. He is not. Of course. I understand. We help you. You help us. Everett, I'm going to leave now, but we might talk again later. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Great. Wouldn't want to get stuck in here. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. All right. Later, nerd. Constables. <laughs> All right. Why does Everett sound like his nose is having a stroke? He's probably got apnea, man. How's the weekend going, kid? Bit goes hard. I don't know what you're talking about. We'll see. I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. Container, the voice container, of an angel. Used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. The tiny man is so engaged in his work, he doesn't notice to you. Oh my god, hi. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? A shadow passes over his kind face. What is it with you people and scabs? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. 
How's your weekend, kid? Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. What's in the container over there? Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Tell you. What are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. He waves at the containers towering behind him. I'm a dumbass. Everything is so pretty and red. You and Leo look like brothers as you glance around with similar childlike wonder. Wow, red is so much prettier than drab old green. Sure is, mister. Sure is. Really livens up the place. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I had to break this bonding moment. But the red containers <laughs> mean they are replacing the company livery with the union livery, which means this strike isn't going to stop anytime soon. Where is everyone? The harbor is empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. He leans in with a confidential look. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. We haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. He pauses to think. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. He stops, but seems eager to tell you more. What trouble did Titus and his friends get into? Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. He smiles and leans closer. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. Don't go all bad cop on this simple, friendly fellow. Really? Did they kill someone? No, I don't think they killed anyone. Let's better talk about something else. Titus and his boys do good work. I don't want to get them in trouble over a little drinking. Do you work here? Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. The little man raises his hand in a welcoming gesture. I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Everett is away. He chuckles. Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. He could hardly chuckle again. Who is this, Miss Beaufort? The lieutenant looks up at Leo. A real pretty lady with a skin like those Dewey Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down beside the radio. Soft and sugar? But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I think you're doing a great job around here, Leo. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. Lieutenant smiles at the little man. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. You didn't even think it was possible, but the smile becomes even wider. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. Okay, I'm off. Bye-bye now. He returns to his work. Cool. The banner sags under the weight of rain and snow. White waves on red. Yes? Uh, uh, you seem to be following me. Excuse me? What if I want to work this case alone? Detective, if I may be frank, you seem to be in a deranged state. You have trouble remembering things. You've misplaced your badge. I cannot let you act in the name of the RCM without supervision until you've regained control of your faculties. But what if I need some me time? Some you time? This is a police investigation, not a journey of self-discovery. You'll still have your evenings to yourself. Okay, I'll leave the self-care for non-work hours. Please do. We wouldn't want your regiment to spill over into the investigation. Spilling all over the place. Ooh, I can't believe I've got some money. Holy crap. Can I use the bolt cutters or something on this? You're back before the cargo can take. Just throw the bolt cutters on. Does that work? You're back before the... Nope. Okay. All right. Let's just wander back, I guess. Now that we have a way back in. Maybe I'll push the go button. See what happens. A rusting control crane Oops. does not know screech of metal when you push... All right. Hmm... Right, let's go throw 10 cents in this thing. The already familiar cold touch of plastic welcomes. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Your fingers run over the dial pad. Zero, zero, 005. That's the dialing code for Revachol. 4952 
and a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. Nine, nine, three. Calling, calling. Still calling. Then. Video Ravishal, 24 hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy, how may I help you? What is this place? Video Ravishal is a 24 hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy. Do you know me? No. No, I meant, what is this place to me? Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. Why did I call you? Maybe you called to extend your rental period? Do you need to extend your rental period? My name is Harry Dubois. Do you have anything on my name? Let me fire up the machine. Dubois. Dubois. Here we are. You haven't rented anything in five years. But you still have a copy of Blue Ocean Hell from November 46. Whoa, not a fun film, that one. What kind of film is that? Uh, it's not an easy watch. After the death of his daughter and subsequent divorce, Ziemsk immigrant Gidius Wojcik tries to come to terms with the onset of dementia. No wonder no one's been missing it. Still, it would be great if you could return it to us. We're on the corner of Voyager and Maine. On the corner of Voyager and Maine, a large neon sign hangs on the side of a building. Video River Show, 24 hours. It's raining, and there is almost no traffic on the street. A woman's footprints in the mud lead away from the front door. Tiny heels tiptoeing down the road. Beautiful steps, light-footed with a lifetime ahead of them. You look up, and the air seems to grow darker. Suddenly, you feel like you don't want to hear about video rentals anymore. You don't want to hear about any of it. It was all shit. It's over. That was all poop. It. Kim, I feel sad about video rubbish all 24 hours. That's enough for you today. Let's conclude this call. We're done. Man, what a downer. The file cabinet stands steady as ever. Mm. Man. Too boring. Did he wake up? He did. It's funny. Do not presume this has drastically altered <clears throat> our race dynamic. I knocked you out like a god of martial arts. I said nothing about our personal dynamic. That has altered a little. He means very little. All right, we're not subscribing to this racist crap. Let's get out of here. So, how'd you like our harbor? I wonder if I should put more points in a visual calculus. It seems to be pretty important, to be honest. Labor utopia. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. He notes solemnly and turns to you, a wide smile adorning his face. Right, you talk to the boss eye to eye. Like men of the plane. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. Everard said you have a key to a door. A key? What door is this key supposed to open? He said it belonged to a weasel. Oh, say no more. I got you. He taps the side of his nose with a little wink. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. I'm not opening this door for myself. I'm opening it for all working men. I knew this man was a commie. And it's a good thing you're doing too. Thanks. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling and rags. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. It means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. His gaze wanders off into the distance. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. Anything else I should know about this task? This weasel person? When he'll be home? I'm more of a philosophical dock worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. The man takes a big sip from his flask. Who he is and what they're fighting for? This is interesting. Ask him about the Hardy Boys. Actually, do you know anything about the Hardy Boys? Los Hardis? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Everard's law. But really, they're just like you. Is he actually comparing you, an officer of the law, to some neighborhood vigilantes? There's only one law, friend. That's me. Why not? Must be nice being something else for a change. The rest of us are just folks. Any idea who killed the hanged man? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? He shakes his head solemnly. 
Let's change the topic. The man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. Why are you striking? We're negotiating our share. Your share? Aye. He seems pleased with himself. Wait, so not wages or pensions or... This stuff. They already covered. How much you feed the wolf? The wolf always wants more. I like wolves. How large a share would you like? All of it. However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board so they could take part in the decision-making process. The boss man, Everard, what can you tell me about him? I think it's best you make up your own mind now that you've met him. In my eyes, he is a capable organizer and a decent businessman. What does boss in the union entail anyway? I guess you kind of get to be the village chief. He oversees the harbor, makes deals with the owners or other relevant parties, watches out for his own. By that, you mean corruption? By heavens, why would he not be corrupt? We live in a harsh and disordered world, and in this world, the old man is corrupt for our benefit, and we know it. Appreciate it, even. He is, personally, not too lavish. That desk seemed lavish to me. He is reasonably lavish, sure. That's his prerogative. It's not like you want a saintly demeanor on a corrupt motherfucker. That would be a manipulative illusion. Sure. Besides, there are no non-corrupt systems in the world anyway. And moralism is the most corrupt of them all. Not you, you would like to say. But then, there's that weasel dog. Are you a communist? No, I don't think I'm a communist. Seeing something of value and saying I want it all to myself is a much older and simpler notion. No science to it at all. Even a weak child can think it. The only things holding someone back are I can't and I shouldn't. You shouldn't take what's not yours. Then how can anything ever be mine? But that's okay. We don't have to agree. The prairie is wide enough for all of us. You seem to have spent a lot of time thinking about the political situation. Sure. I've had the necessary free time. He spreads his arm wide. Always time. The look in his brown eyes conjures up an understanding. For him, having command of his time is the most important thing. The man sits on the railing, his hands reaching far and wide. Yet it feels as if he could effortlessly go even wider, if need be. An endless torrent of time. Good talking to you. Got to run. 